Welcome back to Learn SKN, and today we're going to conclude. We're going to conclude. We're going to finish the June, July, August, May, whatever you want to call it, the 2020 POB Paper One, the multiple choice from 2020, the COVID year. So we're going to wrap that up right now and call it that. Three videos. This is part three. So you know more videos coming. So hit the like button, subscribe. Hit the bell so that you get more videos as we have exams coming in January and later on this year. But before we do that, just something new I just want to let you all know about. Now, this is the 2020 paper, the July 2020 paper. And as you can see, it is completed already with all of the markings and stuff like that. Normally, I would upload the blank one, but I decided to upload this completed one for you to have access to. But in order to do that, you simply click the link in the description it will, it will take you to this site where you can download the completed paper one for 2020 for a low cost of just two dollars just two dollars and you could be you're able to obtain the completed 2020 paper now sometimes you don't want to study from a screen you may want to print out something you know or something like that you have them right there um, before you. you you can use it for that if you want to just print it and go and make um, and, and run with it that's all it is all right so yeah for now you can don download it for just two dollars and the link is in the description all right so thank you all right so let's just jump right into it number 41 governments offer subsidies to businesses to and of course you have some options here force them to pay corporate tax b reduce cost and ultimately prices c increase cost and ultimately prices and D, increase the price of imported goods. All right, so it's a very straightforward one, but what is a subsidy? Now, a subsidy is a form of help, normally financial help, that a government gives a business that helps them to reduce the overall cost of production so that they can be competitive, right? And so if the government is helping you, helping you to reduce your production costs, why? Now, the main reason is for B, reduce costs, which is production costs, and ultimately, prices so ideally if your production cost goes down you should be able to pass those savings on to the customers in the form of lower prices all right so that is why the government gives subsidies so that they can pass the savings the companies can pass the savings on to the customers in the form of lower prices everything else here don't really make any sense because you're not going to give them subsidies to increase the costs right don't make sense that's opposite Price of imported goods that's not what the subsidy does you want to focus on the local local production so that their prices can drop and so that they can reduce the price overall right so that's 41 42 which of the following would be the final step in a supply chain operation supply chain how you get the resources from point a to point b so that you can get this stuff sorted out get your stuff done so we have a trans transformation of natural resources into finished products production right there uh, b movement of movement to and storage of raw materials in warehouses so that's not the final stage because you are just storing them right there they still have more places to go c processing of raw materials and components into finished goods so what happened to the finished goods they're gonna stay right there that's so that cannot be the final step so of course the final step now is delivering the finished products from point of origin to point of destination supply chain right so you're going to take the finished products from point a and deliver them to point b which is the final destination after this point the supply chain ends there's nothing after that right so that's supply chain in a nutshell 43 the following is a global logistics provider very easy everybody could pick the one out of, with, with their eye closed so you have gis gps dhl and portnet and so the only obvious one here we all know this one you have it's only two big ones the big players really dhl or fedex of course amazon coming up too so the best answer here is c not the best the only answer is c dhl gis is all about mapping use, uh, using satellites to map out lands and stuff like that GPS, of course, is about positioning using satellites, satellites to identify locations and positioning and stuff like that. Right? So we don't have anything to do with those other abbreviations. 44. The stock, the stock exchange provides a marketplace where options here again. A. Goods are stored. We ain't even entertain that. Goods are 
So well, because you have market, not because you have market, means it's a physical place. Stock market, ain't nobody store goods in a stock market. You can't go to the stock market and buy anything like that. B, securities are traded. And of course, that's the answer we've gone with. Securities are traded. C, shareholders trade shares. And D, commodities are exchanged. You, you can see that B and C are kind of similar. But what's the difference here now? Why is that different? Because, of course, the stock exchange is more than just shareholders and shares. Right? You have bonds. You have treasury bills. All those things. And all of them are called, all of them are called securities. All right? So, number 45 now. Mia would like to protect her passport, birth certificate, and jewelry. And the jewelry. Which is the following commercial bank services should she use? And, of course, we've seen all the movies out there. We, you know, we see the people them gone and rob the bank vault and, you know, grab them safety deposit boxes. So we know the answer for this one is B, safety deposit box. You see them big vault, different numbers, pull them out. You see all the jewelry in there, all the certificates and all the, you know, different shares and or whatever they want, you know, documents. So it's not online banking. Of course, they cannot protect. How can you, well, you're going to upload. I don't think you can upload jewelry, right? You can't upload anything that's hard copied, right? So not that one. Night safe, night safe facilities. And of course, yes, that, that can be... And uh, something to protect your hardware stuff, but it's just for a temporary, more temporary, right? The night safe is just temporary. So normally, companies would use those things to put a large sum of money overnight, and then that money is would be used next day for whatever business transaction they want to transact. So that's another that, that, that so that's not the answer for that one, right? And so we have automatic teller machines, ATM. I don't think I should even bother explaining that one because clearly the ATM is not used for any of those. All right, so that's number 45. 46, the following groups, group, which of the following groups stand or stands to benefit most from a stable level of prices? Now, again, CX is gonna use these kind of words, most, because there's no definitive answer, right? So you have A, customers, consumers, sorry, B, workers, C, society, and D, firms. And so we choose to go with C, society, because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, stable level of prices affects everybody. If it's not stable, it's going to affect both the consumers, the producers, the workers, everybody. So the best answer is, of course, society. Now, consumers, now imagine you making a budget and you budget a certain amount of money for a certain particular item. Then you go out to buy it, it's higher. You're going to buy it, it's lower. So there's no way you could, the stability does not really help you. You need to be stable so you can budget properly. Workers. Now, if the demand for certain things go down because the price gone way up, or vice versa, then that can affect your employment status. So maybe if the demand is too, is, is low because the price inflation too high, then that would cause workers to be laid off, right? Inflation, high inflation, nobody buying anything, demand goes down, the cycle, workers might get laid off. Right, then we have society, as I said before, everybody gets um, affected. Firms again comes down to inflation, deflation, everything, the prices. So, if the price is prices being inflated, of course, that might be beneficial to the firm. But if the price is fluctuating again, the firm cannot even plan the annual accounts and stuff like that because they don't know how much the price of one thing might be and stuff like that. So, it doesn't benefit anybody if it's not stable. So, society. 47. Which of the following forms of taxation is imposed on goods produced in a country? And so the best answer here is the only answer here is the excise duty. Excise duty are the taxes that are placed on things produced within the borders, within the country. Right? Custom duty would be those that you pay as you import something. So the best answer is excise duty. Alright, 48. Which of the following measures are used by government to redistribute income and of course income redistribution is one way in which the government takes uh, resources from those who have it and try to help those who are less fortunate and so we have a custom duties and levies uh no b consumption taxes and tariffs no c pay as you earn and national insurance and d excise duties and value added tax now the thing here is that these other ones Custom duties and levies, consumption taxes, those are all consumption-based taxes. Meaning, 
they only triggered if you try to buy something so if you want to buy something then you pay the extra for it like that and those kind of things so that excise duties and those things that triggered based on consumption or production one or the other consumption or production but the payers earn a national insurance and also they only stay with the, gov the government take these to as revenue but national insurance is a way in which everybody pool their risk and so those who are unfortunate they can have coverage for certain health issues those are unfortunate based on the pooling of all nations uh, monies pairs earn same way all right so these are ways in which the government can take from one level and redistribute that income to a next level in the form of like social welfare school meals and national insurance as you see here and those kind of things all right 49 the central bank is owned and controlled by you have a government b shareholders c public sector or the country's citizens now way back when way back in the day even i think to a, some extent america the central bank is owned by public sector private sector shareholders right but today in the caribbean for example the central banks are owned by the government in the oecs nations the governments are the one who own that central bank jamaica Barbados, Trinidad, Guyana, the governments of those countries own their central bank. So the same back in the day when it first came up, where you have the Federal Reserve in America owned by private in individuals. No, today it's owned by the governments of whatever territory. Education contributes to the economic growth by ensuring that the workforce is highly, and of course, all of the above, but the most important one here is efficient b that the workforce is highly efficient because for example yes economic education can help you be more mobile in in in, 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 in that if you let's say become a doctor you can perform medicine in almost anywhere so you don't have to be restricted to your island uh, but same way you need to be efficient and so the, the the most overarching one here is efficiency if you're educated you're more efficient because you know how to do things faster quicker without a wastage and stuff like that so you're more efficient 51 one of the major functions of a central bank is to a issue notes and coins most central banks are in charge of minting and issuing the notes and coins used by whatever currency union that they, they, may, they may be the head of for example oecs the eastern caribbean central bank is responsible for the notes and the coins that you you that is circulating within the currency union 52 which of the following measures could be used to protect the environment and next uh, only what goody this one here because yes some words are often throw people off so environmental protection recycling yes deforestation no what conservation yes and so the best answer example is b one and three recycling of course you take the plastics or whatever and you turn them into something else now deforestation is destroying the environment it's not helping you're cutting down trees destroying the environment affecting the balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and things like that so of course anything that has in number two cannot be right so it can be d can be c so it cannot be a this is the only one that affects the environment negatively out of the tree 53 uh, price control may be defined as government limit on the price of goods or services so, so the government limit on the price of goods or service the government goes around and make sure that certain essential people get this wrong you know some people think the government control the price of everything no it's just certain essential items there's a basket of goods that the government see seems fit to to declare those things are essential everybody should have a fair chance at buying these goods and so you have things like your flour your milk your rice those staples those essentials so the government is going to control the price and those things you can't take them too high because if they're too high then the poor man can't afford these things and so the government will make sure that everybody rich or poor can afford certain things but of course it is not on every rice every flour out there there are some that are expensive because if you have the money of course you could afford to buy it so you might have a brand name rice or a brand name flour or a brand name milk that you might prefer buying the government are not going to kill you for that but there are certain ones that they would control the importation of that they would control the price of right it also happens for sometimes in the agriculture sector where the government control the price of certain commodities 
so that the local people can be competitive. Oh, which of the following taxes could be classified as indirect? As in, it doesn't come directly from your income. And the best answer here is B, value added tax. Now, value added tax, that is an example of what you call a consumption tax. All the others, income tax, corporation tax, and capital gains come directly from those sources. So income tax come directly from your pay. You get paid, they take it out one time. Government take it out one time. Corporate tax, you get your, 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 your profit and stuff that comes out. Capital gains tax, same way. But the VAT, the value added tax, is what you call a consumption based tax and it's only enforced if you go and purchase something. If you go and try to consume something, then you have to pay the VAT for that one. If you don't engage in it, then you don't have to pay the VAT for that. Right? Number 55. One economic solution to unemployment in the Caribbean is to we have options here A, export more goods. B, reduce the birth rate, C, nationalize industries, or D, encourage industrialization. All right, so we have some answers here. So A and D might seem as though they are the answer. D is the answer, the best answer, I must say. Of course, reducing the birth rate, uh, that's not really a practical way of solving anything. You can't tell, reduce, you can't put a, a ban on how much children people can get. China tried that, we saw it worked out. So reducing birth rate, not really. Nationalized industries. No, that's where the government takes over certain industries. And so this is not a good approach to uh, to economic increase, improve unemployment. Why I say that? Because normally national anything with the government tend to be a little inefficient, right? And so the best answer exporting more goods. How would you export more goods? You're gonna magically appear so you can export them? Yes, exporting more goods would help with unemployment, but how? Now, encourage industrialization, meaning that you start encouraging the people in your economy, your country to start producing more, more uh, manufacturing and stuff like that, which would in turn lead to more exports, which can lead to more employment. But the first thing first, you have to have your industrialized level increase, which can create more jobs, and so that would help to reduce the unemployment level. So the answer is D. 56. Mrs. Jones has several bills or fixed amounts to pay each month. Mr. Jones made an arrangement. Mrs. Jones made an arrangement to her bank to make these monthly payments on her account. This service provided by the bank is referred to as, and of course, this again. If you're following me, you follow the channel, you know this has appeared in many years. Maybe in a different form. They have Mr. instead of Mrs., but they have been on many papers in the past. And so the best answer here is D is C. A standing order where you tell the bank okay every month take out this same amount and that's and then pay to that to who, whoever they owe right put it on an account put it somewhere else so it's an standing order an overdraft simply means that the bank allows you to take off more money than you actually have and then later you repay that so if you want to pay your workman or something in a kind of shot they can allow you to make an overdraft and then you have to repay that later a fixed deposit it will take monies and you put them in an account and that what like they say fix for a certain amount of years so you say six fixed deposit for like five years you cannot touch that until it matures until it five years up of course you can break it but you have to go through a lot of paperwork to get that done and of course a letter of credit simply means you know you're owing somebody or you the, the bank would hold would, would, you owe somebody and so the bank can use that monies hold that money and you pay somebody later on so banks normally use a letter of credit when they have bank-to-bank -bank transactions where the bank would issue a letter and say, okay, look, this person, they are good for it. You, they, I don't mind. We are guaranteed, guaranteed for this person. So if they don't pay, we'll pay up. So that's a letter of credit. So the best answer is a standing order. Number 57, computer-aided design or uh, CAD can be advantageous too. And uh, we have some options here. A, distribution, production, C, market research, and D, scientific calculations. Now, the best answer here is, of course, B, production, computer-aided designs. Why I say this is the best answer? Normally used in, like, the construction industry, the industrial design industry, so the car-making industry. So if you want, instead of producing, if you're producing a car or a house or, uh, you know, a new pair of shoes, instead of actually doing a mock-up, using actual resources to do a mock-up, what you do, you take the CAD, computer aided design and you put it in you you render it in 3d so that you can actually see the dimensions you can see how it's, the colors look the color scheme would look things like that how it's going to work stuff like that so you don't, you don't have to actually use resources to waste resources in order to 
get the design idea out there for production. So once you're producing something, instead of going full force production, before you produce it, you show a render, a 3D um, version of it, so you can know what dimension and stuff you're working with, and so you save resources, you save money by not producing too many mockups and stuff like that, right? So that's 57. 58, the best indicator of a country's standard of living is the, the answer here would be D, the, the average income of the population, also called the, the income per capita, right? That's how much money somebody earn per capita, meaning the, the, the population. So you divide the total GDP by the size of the population, and so you give an idea as to how much money each person earns within a country. And so the reason why they say it in, it's the best indicator for standard of living is because one of the indicators of standard of living is how much you can afford, right? Standard of living measures how much you can afford, how much house you can afford, how much car you can afford, how much health, that kind of stuff. Yes, there are controversies to this because it doesn't really show income distribution, right? So all that money can be, like in America, the 1%. The top 1% owns all those resources. But it still gives an idea of the standard of living. So they are telling you how rich a country is. And so it can tell you how much, it can give an idea of how much house someone can afford, how much car, that kind of stuff. Standard of living is talking about your how much things you can actually afford. Right, and so the best one would be your average income of the population or the per capita income, right? Or income per capita. 59. In periods of inflation, the ability to raise additional capital for expansion is most likely to be a problem for, and so we have different types of business here. You have the sole trader, partnership, public companies, multinational. And clearly, the best answer here is the sole trader. When it comes around raising capital, the sole trader is always at a disadvantage for the simple fact that it's just one person as opposed to the rest that you have more than one. So I could, so I was in a partnership, if it's two of us, I could go somewhere, you go somewhere, I will combine, right? In a, in, a, in a public company, of course, shares, stocks, that kind of stuff can help you to raise additional uh, capital. Multinational, of course, you can get from the home country, the, whole, the headquarters, wherever, so it's a little easier, right? Last one, number 60. The last question for the May, June, July, August, September, whatever, a 2020 POB paper one. Last question, number 60. The buying and selling of goods and services among countries is called a very easy one to go out with. And of course the answer is B, international trade, right? International trade, the buying and selling of goods and services among countries, international trade. Very easy, very last one. They gave you all, they gave them a treat last year, right? So that's it for the, that's it for this paper, this paper one, the principle of business, the 2020, the controversial year, the COVID year examination year, still have controversy brewing, but that's it for this one. Next set of videos, I think the next one might be a paper three, we don't know, but the only way for you to know is to stay tuned and be in tune. All right, so thanks for watching, thanks for listening.